Uh, good day everyone. Here I am once again, your instructor, Engineer Gerald S. Robles, on my third video installment of a series of video tutorials or discussions that I had made specifically for this subject, fluid machinery or fluid machineries. Now, a question is, is it necessary or is it even important for us to be able to know the different piping requirements? So, the answer is a resounding yes. Piping can not only be found in industrial, manufacturing, and then power plant applications, but that they could also be found in our very own homes. So, any reason? So, yung reason is yung presence ng fluids. So, again, pag sinabi natin fluids, we're not only referring to what we call liquids, likewise, we are also referring to what we call gases. So, in residential applications, water is actually being conveyed in piping systems. Now, aside from water distribution, other fluids such as natural gas and then steam that are used in heating systems during the winter season are also conveyed via the so-called piping systems. It is for this particular reason that everyone should have an awareness on why and then how piping systems are so connected or actually being constructed. Now, as a student, specifically as disciples of the mechanical engineering profession, it is particularly important on our part to have a general knowledge, not just an idea, on what piping systems are designed for, their construction, their components, and then general regulations that actually govern their existence. Now, for PME practitioners or uh, mechanical contractors, this is very important on their part so that the piping system that they are actually constructing are done accordingly, according to standards, and are properly working. As any works on pipes, piping components or piping systems could actually lead to injury, worse, fatality, and then eventually destruction to property. So this would eventually translate into cost rather than potential earnings. So ang pinaka-worst possible case scenario is that Possibly, the license of such PME practitioner or mechanical contractor could be possibly be revoked regarding such incompetence. So, punta na tayo sa ating uh, general discussion. So, again, ang topic natin is about uh, piping, second part. So, I will be discussing about the general piping requirements. So, the general piping requirements are a set of guidelines or standards that are used or considered so that piping systems are assembled in, in, assembled in various industries such as power and then industrial or manufacturing are ensured to possess the structural or functional integrity to prevent possible accidents that may lead to accidents and property damage and then again, worse human casualty. So, ano yung tinutukoy natin yung PSME or PME code? So, this actually consists of a number of fields that falls under the mechanical engineering profession and is mostly based on our US counterparts, the ASME code. So, pag sinabi natin PME code, we are referring to the Philippine Mechanical Engineering Code. Pag sinabi naman natin ASME, we are referring to the American Society of Mechanical Engineers Code. PSME code naman is read as uh, Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers Code. Now, yung handbook na to is a great help for aspiring or established mechanical engineering practitioners and the design of components or systems falling under the BSME field. So, lahat ng mga guidelines or conditions dito had already been proven and are actually according to standards, uh, according to the different kinds of profession. So, start tayo sa ating general piping requirements. So, for number one, all piping should run parallel to the building walls. So, as could be seen from the picture, uh, uh, this piping guideline is to ensure that available space is actually maximized. Also, pipes arranged in such orderly manner prevents any tripping accidents, uh, incidents or hazards as pipes do not interfere with the walkways or aisles. Lastly, uh, kinoconsider natin itong general piping requirement na to for aesthetic purposes. As pipes constructed in such manner would not be an eyesore 
or eventually contributing to the well-being of the personnel or of the worker involved. So, kung titinan natin yung picture sa slide natin dito, no? Piping systems that could be found within in ships or tankers. So, kung titinan natin yung configuration dito, hindi natin maiwasan yung gantong concept, no? So, with limitations in space, uh, such type of pipe laying could no longer be prevented. Now, if such pipe in consideration is not considered, the layout of pipes would, like, uh, would be like a maze. So, maze-like, which would complicate line tracing. More so, if no color coding actually exists, as well as repairs, as well as, as well as repairs, and then possibly alterations. So, for general piping requirement number two, group piping should be supported on racks either on the horizontal or vertical planes. Now, a span of piping is a bit heavy and is heavier when fluids are made to pass along the pipe. Now, group piping results into enormous weight that if not properly supported, would cause the entire piping system to collapse. Thus, it is only imperative or important that group piping should be supported on either the vertical or horizontal racks. So, sa picture na, makikita natin yung iba't ibang klase ng pipe support. So, in this case, we have here what we call a pipe stanchion. So, similar to a uh, horse saddle, uh, these are examples of rigid pipe supports. Uh, the uh, lower picture suggests a fabricated uh, rigid leg support. So, another example of a pipe support. So, in this case, we have the so-called pipe shoe. So, similar to, to shoe where the pipe is actually inserted inside. So, hence the term shoe. So, ito naman, we have an adjustable leg support for varying temperature fluids. So, pag sinabi natin varying temperature fluids, uh, we have uh, uh, changing uh, temperature of fluids. So in this case, kung pabago-bago yung corresponding temperature ng fluid natin, it is not possible to make or to make to make use of a rigid kind of support. So kinakailangan i-allow niya yung possible uh, movement. So picture dito, we have an example of a rigid pipe support. Uh, we have here in this case a, a picture of a U-bolt. Then, a pipe saddle with a U-bolt, another kind of uh, rigid pipe support. And then, we have here pipe hangers with rollers. So, yung pipe hangers natin dito with rollers are examples of a pipe support that takes care of thermal motion or thermal movement. So, these are various pictures of uh, what we call pipe supports once again. So, these are examples of specialized pipe supports that support and then eventually cushions, shock loads. So, pinaprevent ito yung possible damage from being given on the part of the machines to where such pipe things are actually being connected. Uh, specialized pipe supports that supports as well as cushions as well as uh, shock loads. So, again, yun yun sila. So, ito yung listing natin ng iba't ibang klase na pipe supports. The additional listing. So for number three, all piping two headers shall come from below rack. So ito yung tinutukoy natin header. So yung pa header natin, no? Ano yung tinutukoy natin header? Headers are considered to be temporary storage points where fluid is coming from the main line before being diverted into multiple branches of pipes flowing into different processes or equipments. So, ano yung reason natin dito for uh, general piping requirement number 3? Now, since the source is typically located underneath or below, it is only natural that piping or uh, piping coming from the piping source connected to header should come from below rack. In this case, free space is actually conserved at the bottom where workers can work properly and unpeededly. So, general piping requirement number 4. Ito naman, no? Kabalik na rin naman to. So, kung meron tayong piping to the headers, meron tayong piping coming from the headers. So, sabi, for number 4, all piping coming from the headers should go up above the rack. 
So for number four, piping coming from the so-called headers or branching out of pipes should go up above the rack as this results into shorter lengths of piping versus piping coming from the headers going below rack which would necessitate longer pipes and not allowing maximum free space. So another consideration is that it prevents possible impurities possessed by the fluid from readily mixing. So, ang kinoconsider natin dito is yung effects ng gravity and then getting caught up by equipments or machineries or machines if it were to move upwards as against moving downwards. So, kung titignan natin yung picture dito, no? sa may configuration natin dito, eventually, kung meron tayong mga unwanted solid impurities dito, hindi siya basta-basta makakahalo sa flow natin. So, again, due to the force of gravity. So, for number 5, all piping above or below rack should be supported on separate racks. Uh, pipe weight should be distributed properly and not concentrated along a common point or location. Kasi pag concentrate natin siya along a common point or common location, ano yung possibly yung chances na magkaroon tayo ng pipe collapse or pipe system collapse. As such, there should be pipe racks or supports located on separate racks. So as can be seen on the picture, kung babasin ninyo, uh, yung mga pipe racks natin dito is not concentrated at along a common point. So evenly distributed yung corresponding weight. So mababa yung chances na magkaroon tayo dito na pipe system collapse. So group piping results in heavier weight, thus the need to distribute the combined weight uh, to avoid possible collapse. So, kung titignan natin yung figure na, naroon tayo dito isang water tank, water storage tank. So, question dito is, ever wondered why water tanks such as this have a dome-shaped bottom instead of a flat base? So, ano ba yung reason? So, the welding efficiency is actually increased as the weight is evenly distributed instead of being concentrated at the sides. Thus, lessening the likelihood of well fracture. So, in case na, let's say, for example, yung storage tank naman natin still located at this particular uh, way, no much concern as the ground or earth cushions the fluid weight, thus creating no negative effect on the weld, uh, on the welds. So, for number 6 naman, no? all piping should run with slight inclination. So, ano ba yung reason? So, this is mainly to enhance the pipe drainage without using any additional device. So usually, ang angle of inclination natin dito is around 5 to 10 degrees. So mas madali niya, madi-discharge yung uh, any unwanted fluids dito. Supposedly, uh, mag-undergo mag siya na preventive maintenance. So for number 7 naman, all piping on racks should have a sufficient spacing. So, piping should have sufficient spacing to allow possible repairs or alterations to take place. So, with the right spacing, repairs or alterations could be done in a GV or in, a, in as soon as possible time as well as maximizing space limitations. So, kung titignan natin yung picture nito, no? yung sinabi ko nga sa inyo, ito yung typical case scenario sa isang ship. Although maze like in appearance, there are still workable spaces for repairs or possible alterations. Pipes laid without proper spaces would be next to impossible to be repaired or altered unless the whole piping system is actually being disassembled. So for uh, number 8 naman tayo, no? uh, sabi dito sa number 8, all piping... 63.5 mm, which is equivalent to 6.35 cm, and above should be flanged while the smaller ones can be screwed. So, meron tayong two set of pipe set diameters ito, larger one, then the smaller one. So, large pipe size diameters, 63.5 mm and above, should be flanged. So, ano yung flange connection? A connection that is characterized by a pair of circular plates that are bolted all together. So, ang question natin dito is, why not provide a uh, common threaded connection? So, simply lang reason natin dito. Reason, there is no available pipe wrench or device that would turn the large pipe sizes if there were to be threaded instead of being bolted 
by the by the use of a pair of flanges. So for number 9 naman tayo, on long headers, a pair of flanges should be provided for every 3 lengths of 6,000 mm or 6 meters of pipes, 63.5 mm and above. So such piping requirement is to allow shut off or isolation of a malfunctioning pipeline, thus allowing continuous operation of the piping system without actually shutting down the whole piping system. So kung gusto natin mag... Uh, mag-undergo na isolation dito, gagamit tayo ng pair of open flange plus uh, a blind flange. So, titinutukin natin open flange, mimate natin dito, which is what we call a blind flange. So, when combined together, they are used for isolation purposes. Now, to allow fluid to flow, gagamit tayo ng pair of uh, open flanges. So, may mali lang dito, no? So, to allow flow, kinakala, meron tayong pair of open flanges. So, for number 10 naman tayo, uh, balikan lang din natin yung nandito, no? So, in this case, you know, for general piping requirement number 9, maglalagay tayo ng pair of flanges for every 3 lengths, na, for every 3 lengths or for every uh, 2 meter length of pipe, pipelines. So, for number 10, Similar to do sa general piping requirement number 9, except that magkaiba sila ng corresponding pipe size diameter. So, ito yung small pipe size diameter. On long headers, a pair of unions should be provided for every 3 lengths of 6,000 mm of pipes smaller than 63.5 mm. So, in this case, instead na gagamit tayo ng pair of flanges or pair of open flanges sa blind flange, gagamit tayo ng union. Tapos, in tandem with the union, kung gusto natin mag-provide uh, mag ng isolation, ng medium, i-isolate natin isang pipeline, gagamit tayo ng combination ng union and then that of a plug. So, we have here what we call a threaded pipe connector. So, titinutukoy natin coupling. Ito naman yung tinutukoy natin nipple. So, yung nipple could be uh, bought readily made at the hardware or so, pwede natin itong i-fabricate from a uh, piece of uh, pipeline. O, from a piece of pipe, tapos tetread na lang natin siya. Then, ito yung tinutukoy natin union. So, in difference between a coupling and then that of a union, so, yung union provides a much faster connection. So, pwede natin inggalaw yung both ends dito. Unlike dito sa tinutukoy natin coupling, Yung isang end, once I rotate natin, hindi na natin po pwedeng rotate yung other end. Rather, yung isang pipe natin, ito connected sa pipe coupling natin, yung kinakailangan natin rotate para magkaroon ng sturdy connection. So, general piping requirement number 11, all piping subjected to varying temperatures. So, pag sinabi natin varying temperatures, babago-bago yung corresponding temperature. Either magkaroon tayo increase in temperature or decrease in temperature. So, all piping subjected to varying temperatures should be provided with expansion joints or expansion loops. Now, generally, pipes are made from metals, which has this property called thermal expansion or ter thermal movement. Now, if the pipes conveying substances of varying temperatures are not provided with expansion joints or loops, this will in turn result into what we call thermal stress. So, you Lahat ng klase ng stress can cause possible damage. So, yung thermal stress ato can cause possible damage within the piping system. So, we, ha we have two possible conditions para magkaroon tayo ng thermal stress to take place. So, first one, kinakailangan meron tayong changes in temperature for the kind of fluid that is to be conveyed. And then number two, for thermal, thermal stress to take place, not allowing the thermal expansion, contraction, or movement to take place. So, sabihin, gumagalaw, pero hindi siya makagalaw. Gagalaw yung tinutukin natin pipeline, pero hindi siya makagalaw dahil doon sa uh, means of connection na pinurbide natin para sa piping system. So, certain sections prone to thermal expansion are, free, uh, are fixed rigidly with respect to a given foundation or support it would likely develop thermal stress which could be a reason for possible failure. So for number 12 naman tayo, 
no galvanized piping should be used for steam applications. So, yung rusting o yung tinutukoy nating metal oxidation is the number one concern of all metallic pipes. As such, for steam piping, it is a big no-no to use galvanized piping material. The high temperature, high pressure characteristic of steam will eventually erode or degrade the zinc coating of galvanized piping thus making it prone to what we call rust formation. So, pag sinabi natin galvanized piping, yung galvanized piping na to is actually uh, coated with what we call zinc coating. So, yung zinc coating na to, ito yung nagpo-prevent na possible rust formation. So, technically speaking, supposedly, ma-degrade or ma-erode yung tinutukoy nating uh, zinc coating na to, magiging prone na sa rusting yung tinutukoy nating uh, galvanized piping. So, as can be seen from the picture, meron na tayong rust formation from the inside, whereas from the outside, mukhang bago, walang rust formation. So, yung reason is degraded na ngayon yung tinutukoy natin zinc coating from the inside, whereas intact pa rin yung zinc coating natin on the outside. So, may nakalagay dito ang uh, comment. The galvanized material, o yun nga, sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, zinc coating, is susceptible to high temperature substances. Instead, make use of carbon steel. So, pag sinabi natin carbon steel, it is extremely hard. However, ang problema natin dito is, it is actually brittle. So, madali siyang mabasad. Number 13, no piping should be used that is easily corroded by material passing through. Now, there should be proper recognition on the kind of fluid that is to be conveyed within a piping system. This will in turn suggest the kind of piping material that should be used. In cases that, as if example, metallic pipes are not possible due to the corrosive nature of the fluid to be conveyed within a piping system, pwede tayong gamamit ang tinutukoy natin thermoplastics. So, thermoplastics are capable of withstanding both high pressures as well as high temperatures. So, general piping requirement number 14. All piping should be clamped by u bolts or clamps to supporting racks except steam piping. So, again, pag sinabi natin steam piping, meron tayong tinatawag na thermal motion or thermal movement. All, pipe, all steam piping should be supported on rollers or sliding support. So for number 14, if the fluid to be conveyed within a piping system are normal temperature fluids and not varying temperature fluids, then the use of U-bolts as pipe supports is actually possible. However, in cases that the piping is for steam applications, the use of U-bolts is no longer possible. This time, make use of rollers or sliding supports to allow for thermal movement. So para may iwasan natin build up ng tinutukoy natin thermal stress. So, ito yung tinutukoy natin U-bolt, tapos ito naman yung tinutukoy natin roller. So, for number 15, piping support should be placed on a 3,000 mm interval or less, or 3 meter, inter 3 meter interval or rest, uh, less. Uh, the location and then use of the proper number of piping supports is imperative or important to prevent the possible collapse of the piping system. So, kung gagamit naman tayo na maraming piping supports, too many piping supports can effectively prevent piping system collapse but would in turn result into unwanted or unnecessary expenses. Now, using a lesser number of piping supports would result into a lower investment cost in the short run but would eventually result into a higher expenses in the long run as there is a strong possibility of pipe system collapse. So for number 16, all piping carrying pressure should be of sufficient bursting strength for the pressure applied. So sabi dito, a minimum factor of safety of 4 for the working pressure applied should be used. So ano yung tinutukoy natin bursting strength? Bursting strength refers to the maximum pressure or refers to the maximum strength that the pressure vessel may contain before eventually fading. So for number 16, once the kind of fluid to be conveyed is actually identified, the pipe material to be considered should be of sufficient bursting strength. 
So, makikita natin sa PSME code yung kung anong klase ng material na pwede natin gamitin. So, mostly, meron tayong gantong klase ng fluid. Uh, to be able to withstand the pressure characteristic of the fluid that is to be conveyed. So, 17 provision. 17. <clears throat> For conveying liquid subject to water hammer, an additional factor safety of 100% of the working pressure should be applied. So, titinan natin dito. Uh, grabe, yung tinutukoy nating uh, safety factor, design factor na consider dito para na-double or actually na-triple. So, ano ba yung tinutukoy nating water hammer? So, water hammer is considered to be a phenomena that is characterized by vibration and then distinct sounds within pipes when the bulb controlling the fluid flow is suddenly stopped. So, titinan natin sa configuration. Bulb glows, so water is still. So, when the bulb is actually open, it would cause the water to actually move. So, when the bulb is suddenly closed, magkaroon tayo ng incidence ng water hammer. So, for fluid to flow, it requires force or pressure. Once the flow is actually impeded, the flow crashes at the wall of the bulb. This sends shock waves characterized by vibration and then distinct sounds. So, tinitunutukoy nating uh, water hammer. The end result is catastrophic depending upon the volume flow rate of the fluid as well as the pipe's size diameter. So, kung titignan natin configuration natin dito, we have here an illustration of a hydraulic power plant. So, nag-collapse siya o nagkaroon tayo ng hydraulic power uh, Hydroelectric power plant collapse as a result of this what we call a uh, water hammer. So for number 18 naman, 18 uh, piping provision. All piping carrying steam, hot water, or hot liquid should be properly be insulated. So for number 18, the purpose of insulation is not to prevent heat loss or heat gain. So... Kung hindi niya pinaprevent yung heat loss or heat gain, anong ginagawa niya? So, ano ba muna yung reason bakit hindi niya napiprevent yung tinutukoy natin heat loss or heat gain? Uh, heat gain. So, as the concept of heat transfer cannot be prevented, but that can they can be minimized through the use of what we call insulators. So, heat transfer basically takes place due to temperature difference. So, dapat nyo lang tandaan is that the higher the temperature difference or the higher the temperature disparity, the greater the rate of heat transfer. So, ang purpose lamang pala ng insulator is that they basically lower the temperature difference between two regions or two locations, thus allowing only a small fraction of the heat transfer, either heat loss or heat gain, to take place. So, insulation materials normally have a silver color. This color is unique in that it is in that heat is actually made to bounce rather than being absorbed. So, ito din yung reason before, no? kung titinan nyo yung mga sasakyan before, ang tint before was silver instead of black. So, however, ang naging problema is, kung meron tayong direct sunlight, ang tendency is, nagkakos naman siya ng uh, vision problems kasi masyado na kasilaw. Yung, yung heat that is actually being radiated by the silver insulation. So, in that case, kung titignan natin nowadays, ang insulation, karaniwan sa sakyan nyo yun, instead na silver color, is actually in the color of black. So, num number 19 naman tayo, no? Drains from steam piping should be provided with, uh, with steam traps. So, used steam still possesses a certain amount of heat that could be still be reused. So, instead of being wasted, as such, steam traps are used along the drains of steam piping to extract the steam from the condensate. So, yung condensate, itong tinutukoy natin liquid for possible reuse of, of for possible reuse instead of just being wasted. So, instead na itapon natin siya, gagamitin natin siya para mapakinabangan natin siya. Uli, ano? So, itong tinutukoy natin steam trap. So, 28 provision. Uh, on all screw joints, the threaded portion should enter fittings with three threads or three revolutions by hand 
before a pipe wrench is to be used. So, ano yung reason? Bakit kinakalang insert muna natin by at least 3 revolutions manually or by hand before gagamit tayo ng pipe wrench. Pipe wrench. Now, this is to prevent possible damage on the tightening of screw joints or pipes. So, it is a standard procedure to manually enter at least 3 threads of the screwed pipe or joints by hand before making use of a pipe wrench. So, again, uh, one thread is equivalent to one revolution. So, at least kinakalang ikot natin siya by at least three threads or three revolutions. So, 21st uh, general piping provision, pipe threads should be lub uh, lubricated by white lead, red lead, graphite, and oil or other approved thread lubricants before tightening. So, for number 21, now, to, pre uh, to prevent possible da thread damage and allow easier connection or disassembly of the screwed pipes or joists, it is imperative or important to use thread lubricants before tightening the suction weight. So, gablay tayo na thread lubricants para mention natin na yung threads natin on the case of the pipes are not being damaged. So, number 22 naman, no rubber or rubberized gasket should be used for steam or other hot liquids. Flange connection of pipes makes use of gaskets to allow for easier separation or disassembly between the flange pieces. So in this case, ano, making use of rubberized gaskets is not possible in cases that the substance to be conveyed is a higher temperature fluid as it can cause possible damage onto the rubberized gasket. Now instead, make use of fiber gaskets. So, ano yung tinutukoy natin yung fiber gasket? A fiber gasket is a kind of gasket that is made from a special kind of compressed fiber that can take care of high temperature characteristic of steam or other hot fluids. So, 23rd provision. So, yung 23rd uh, general piping requirement natin is actually similar to piping requirements number 9 and then number 10. Except that this is much more simpler and then more practical. Kasi yung uh, pipe requirements natin sa number 9 and then number 10, uh, yeah, para magkaroon lang tayo ng isolation, kinakailangan magkaroon muna tayo ng disassembly process. So in this case, ano, magpo-provide lang tayo ng shot of bulb. So, more simpler and more practical in that it does not require any disassembly process to allow shut off of a malfunctioning pipeline. So, since nandito na mismo yung tinutukoy natin shut off bulb, meron tayong quick uh, control or quick access. 24th provision, all piping should be reasonably be cleaned before installation. Now, piping should be cleaned before installation with other piping components and machines and or equipments to prevent any unwanted objects from getting caught up within the piping system. So, this could cause damage onto the machines or equipments which are way more expensive than the pipe or piping system. So, kinakalang linisin muna natin pipes or uh, pipes as well as in piping system components bago, muna tayo, bago tayo magkaroon ng installation process. So, magamit tayo normally ng compressed air. So, yung reason kung bakit madalas makikita tayo ng air compressors within the industry. So, 25th uh, general piping procedure or requirement, all piping should be free from bursts or protruding metals from the inside. So, ano yung tinutukoy natin bursts? Bursts are deformities or protruded metal parts mainly as a result of cutting the pipes. They should be removed as they can cause possible damage onto the threaded pipe connections uh, as well as pipe system components. So normally, gumagamit lang tayo dito ng grinder to grind off these excessive uh, protruding metals from the inside. So 26 provision, No piping should be embedded onto concrete walls or floors. So, there are times that pipes in the long run could eventually leak. Now, if such pipings are actually embedded or buried under bodies of concrete, this can cause quite a serious problem in the long run as cracks can form within the time 
within the time damaging the concrete foundation. So, makikita natin cracks dito, no? As a result of the leaks coming from the pipes. So, ano pwede natin gawin dito? Instead, Consider burying pipes under loose earth or soil to prevent such unwanted situation from taking place. So in this case, ano, mas madali nating i-access yung pipes natin dito. Supposedly, gusto natin mag-conduct uh, mag ng repairs as well as alterations. So 27th uh, piping uh, provision, where piping has to be located in trenches, the pipe should be supported on steel branches on the floor of the trench. So, for number 27, if piping is to be located on trenches or dug earth, they should be mounted on the top of steel branches or supports to prevent them from being totally submerged, especially if such trench is accidentally flooded. So, ano yung reason kung bakit gumagamit tayo ng steel supports or steel branches? This will eventually allow easier monitoring kasi nga hindi nakasubmerge yung pipeline natin as well as easier access on the, on the case of the pipes itself. So, seal branches elevate sections or spans of piping preventing them from being submerged. So, 28 provision where piping has to be located in trenches, a suitable drainage or sump for the removal of liquid accumulation should be provided for the trench. So for number 28, aside from making use of steel branches, such trenches should also be provided with drains. Anong purpose and drains? So this is to prevent the piping line from being submerged, thus allowing easier monitoring and then possible repairs when needed. So in this case, no, pagka hindi na kaya, grabe na yung accumulation uh, ng liquid. So hindi na kaya ng uh, natural way, uh, natural drainage, gumagamit na tayo ng tinatawag nating sump pump. So for our 29th provision, where piping carrying steam or hot liquids have to pass walls of concrete, Suitable sleeves made up of pipes one size bigger should be embedded in concrete before the pipe is actually being laid. Now, for number 29, if the pipes conveying substances of varying temperatures are required to pass onto concrete walls, they should be provided with sleeves to allow any thermal movement of such metallic pipes, preventing any unwanted structural damage onto the walls. So, ginagamit natin yung tinutukoy nating uh, sleeves na to, no? To take care of any thermal motion or thermal movement. So, para eventually, ma-prevent din natin yung tinutukoy nating concept ng thermal stress. So, ito yung tinutukoy nating pipe sleeve. So, 38th provision, second to the last provision. Piping to all equipment should not be supported to any stress on equipment being connected. Now, essentially, machines or equipments to where pipes are connected are more expensive than the pipes themselves. Thus, it is actually important or imperative that there should be no unnecessary stress by way of vibrations, ito yung nagkakos ng stress, ano, coming from the pipes, which could find itself onto the machines. As such, specialized kinds of piping supports which takes care of any, any unnecessary loads or forces or movements are actually used. So, ito yung pinakita natin doon sa general piping requirement number 2. <clears throat> Mga specialized piping supports. So, pinaprevent natin yung possible vibration. Then, the last one. Uh, pipes carrying liquids with solids. So, pag sinabi natin liquids with solids, we're referring to slurry-like substances. So, use long radius elbows or T's with plugs in the direction of low. So lastly, slurry-like substances can cause possible clogging within the piping system, most especially at diversion points or joints such as elbows. Now, to remedy such problem, make use of long radius elbows rather than short radius elbows. Pag sinabi natin wrong, uh, long radius elbows, they are 1.5 times the pipe size diameter as compared to a short radius elbow wherein it only has 1 times the pipe size diameter. 
So, yung longer curvature of such elbows prevent the faster accumulation of lag solid particles which could obstruct the flow within the piping system. Now, <clears throat> supposedly, the possibility of clogging can no longer be prevented. Doon na natin ngayon magagamit yung tinutukoy natin plugs. So, ito yung plug natin, no? So, should the possibility of plugging can no longer be prevented, or no longer be prevented, the use of plugs in the direction of flow would come in handy. So, ayan. So, the direction of flow. So, yun po yung presentation natin na uh, tinutukoy natin general piping requirements. So, once again, all general piping requirements was sourced out from our very own Philippine Mechanical Engineering Code. So, yun lang po. Thank you for listening.